etc. includes today's uh, talk on Obama's national security force, his civilian security force. To talk about it is Army Staff Sergeant David Belevia. He is also the executive director of the Warrior Legacy Foundation, the author of House to House. Matthew Spaulding is here. He's the director of the B. Kenneth Simon Center for American Studies at the Heritage Foundation. Matt, let me just start with you real quick because we were sure. in a break and Harry, one of the, the jib camera operators, said to me, so who is the security force? I said, I'm not really sure yet, but I think it's <laughs> going to be it's going to be under the, the guise of AmeriCorps, I believe, because that has just received half a trillion dollars in funding, correct? Uh, President Obama from the campaign has always talked about vastly expanding AmeriCorps, which is made up of all sorts of these little corps doing all sorts of things. But the key thing to understand, which is why you laid it out that way, is why does the left need this? And the left has always argued for this. William James wrote an article in 1906 calling for the moral equivalent of war. This is part of transforming America. They want to transform it from a decentralized civil society into a national community. They want to use the military fervor, the cohesiveness, the, the strength of the military, and they want to direct it towards new activist social justice outcomes. Okay. That's what the progressives have talked about for a long time. Okay. I, 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 we're going to talk about some of the groups that are going to come start being folded in, but, um, but David, let me, let me go to you. Um, who, who is the enemy? that we need a national security force inside. Who is the end? Can you come up with anybody? You? I, I, I really don't know, Glenn. I mean, you know what it comes down to, though? And, and I want to make this comparison. I'm not, I'm not comparing my president to Saddam Hussein or to Hitler or anything else. I want your audience to understand something from a military point of view. When Saddam Hussein lost confidence in his army in 91, when they capitulated, when they quit, when they stopped following his orders, he created and, and he supported, re-supported what was called a fedayeen, a group of loyalists who weren't loyal to the, the country or the flag. They were loyal to the office of president and to the man who held that office. And what we're seeing now is a complete disconnect to the warrior class in America, to the military, and to the left. They never had a common denominator. They never had a way to understand us. So you know what? We don't need you. If we have to enforce, let's say, I don't know, polling laws, we want to keep polling intimidation down in 2012, we'll send in our civilian corps. If we want to make sure the census is run correctly and the right people are counted, we'll bring in our civilian corps. If we want to, I don't know, take away the arms of radical militias in, in South Texas, bring these guys in. This is scary stuff. But I, 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 mean, I mean, I'm finding, I'm finding this. This is the hardest part to connect to because this is. I mean, look, um, you know, David, what you just said is you said I'm not comparing, but you are. I mean, this is what. Hitler did with the SS. He had his own people. He had the brown shirts and then the SS. This is what Saddam Hussein. So, but you are comparing that. And I, I mean, I think America would have a really hard time getting their arms around that. But, but you know, Glenn, all right, when I was in Iraq, I was surrounded by, by true mobs, okay? I'm talking about people hundreds of people that were around us that were upset that were throwing rocks but you know what Glenn in that group you had to identify three individuals who were the instigators who were the agitators and you took those guys out because you had a window of opportunity and once that window closed Glenn it was it was critical mass it was a powder keg if you allowed those people to instigate people the rocks became grenades the sticks became rifles and what I'm saying right now is that we are at a point that if we allow this, this crowd of people wouldn't have rose to arms without the people that were stirring the pot, that were moving the embers of violence. And we're at a point right now where on both sides of the, of the aisle, the radicals in this country need a push. And we are back into a situation that is going to be out of control. And yeah. it, this is not a joke. This isn't fun. I know. Um, uh, Matthew, this is, gosh, this is what I've been warning for a very long time. Um, Matthew. Do you believe that when he says, I need a national security force as well funded and as well um, uh, trained as the military, that that's what he really truly means? That these aren't, they're not sending out, you know, 
a half a trillion dollars worth of paint brushes to paint people's houses? There, there's, I think we may be careful here. There's a military aspect to this, but it's not military in the sense that I think we're talking about here. This is part of the government wanting to actively transform society and create a civilian core with military aspects and how they're going to be dressed and how they talk to each other and how they communicate and how they show their allegiance. It's not going to be quite as militaristic in the same sense as that, but the effect, I would argue, is more despotic than the one you're suggesting. They're trying to change people's character in a fundamental way to have their allegiance to the state and the civil core and the senior yeah, core and the AmeriCorps, whatever it might be. But that's not, I mean, first of all, I'm not suggesting anything. I'm asking questions. I, I don't know what this means. Um, but I will tell you that it sure leads down that road, and I'm begging the White House to rationally and reasonably say, we don't believe in revolutionaries. We didn't know these guys were revolutionary communists that we have hired. We don't know how that one happened. We don't support those kinds of things, and we see how Americans can take it this way. This is what we mean by a national civilian security force. Um, so given, what, given what he has said and the care with which he usually speaks, he has left something out there that is extremely dangerous and in the current circumstances it needs to be clarified. Okay, thank you both very much. Back in just a second. I don't want to bury this. If I've made any mistakes, I don't want to bury it. Do we have an answer yet on what I said and what the real number is yet? Okay. I'm sorry, but numbers are... I don't even know what's a big number anymore. If I said billion or trillion, 550 billion, half a trillion, or what I said, I want to make sure I have the number right. We will correct it by the end of the show. We are checking on it, not because anybody called us on it, because we were questioning it ourselves in the middle of the uh, break. We're talking about AmeriCorps today, and uh, I am not sure what people think.